Many of us will likely live our whole lives without ever going to prison, but those that have been sent to prison in the past often share horror stories about these experiences. The world is full of scary, strict prisons, but today we'll be taking a look at the strictest prisons in the world. Prisons where it feels like inmates aren't even allowed to dream. The inmates in these terrifying prisons don't often make it out alive, either due to the inhumane treatment from the guards or fellow inmates. Buckle up, because this is going to be a wild one. Before we get started, be sure to hit the like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Also, stick around until the end to learn about a prison so terrible that you won't even believe it exists. Gitarama Prison, Rwanda This prison is located in Rwanda and was built to hold over 400 prisoners. However, in 1994, a series of crimes broke out in Rwanda that led to hundreds of thousands of people losing their lives. Many of the people who committed these awful crimes ended up in the Gitarama prison. This led to over 7,000 people being sentenced to a prison in a building that could only hold 400. To say this prison is overcrowded would be a disturbing understatement. Both men and women are located in this prison, although there is barely enough room for them to stand up. They are so densely packed into the prison that the floors cannot properly be cleaned, leading most inmates to become sick with foot infections. These infections can grow and become worse, causing many of their feet literally to rot away. This may sound like something that takes place in a horror film, but this is real life. When their feet begin to rot, they are usually referred to the prison doctor for amputation, though the problem is that there is only one doctor for a prison that holds 7,000 inmates. Most inmates are unable to be seen by the doctor, leading at least six people to pass away each day in the prison simply due to foot infections. This is sickening. San Quentin State Prison, USA This prison has remained one of the most violent prisons in U.S. history. Used only for the worst inmates in the country, San Quentin was first opened in 1852. The prison has seen many changes over the years, with it now being a male-only facility. There have been several high-profile criminals sentenced to San Quentin, including Charles Manson, Scott Peterson, and Sirhan Sirhan, the man who infamously claimed the life of Robert Kennedy. Even though the death penalty is banned in most U.S. states, San Quentin is home to the only gas chamber in the state of California. Prisoners who are sent to this prison are often shown the worst side of America, as the prison is filled with violence and was once loaded with inequity. A great example of this took place in the 1930s. At this time, the prison had quite a reputation for being unfair to an inmate who wasn't white. Because of this, riots would often break out based solely on the race of other inmates. Worse yet, the guards would provoke the inmates to fight one another and would watch as the inmates had their way with their enemies. This has all supposedly been fixed since then, but San Quentin has had a difficult time outliving the memories of its past. Diyarbakir Prison, Turkey This prison is located in Turkey and is known worldwide for being one of the cruelest facilities to have ever been built. The building holds the world record for having the most human rights violations per inmate in human history. Rather than being considered a prison, this facility is often referred to as a house of torture, with many inmates being severely abused while being behind bars. This abuse can be seen both mentally and physically, with the prison guards doing nothing to help. It has been said that family members who visited their loved ones in prison refused to speak to them because they feared that their words might cause the inmates to be harmed when they returned to their cell. Interestingly, this was one of the very few prisons that was designed to house both male and female inmates, though they are kept in separate areas of the building to avoid harm to one another. The building was only designed to hold about 700 people, but it is often holding far more than that, leading to serious overcrowding issues. Terre Haute, USA If you thought the previous two prisons were rough, this one takes things a step further. Terre Haute was opened in 1940 and was created to be the new home of inmates of all backgrounds. There was a maximum security unit, a medium security unit, and a low security unit. The prison would contain everyone from shoplifters to serial criminals. It has since been nicknamed Guantanamo North because of its strict rules and regulations. Prisoners are watched closely 24-7 
and many of them are kept in small cages by themselves. They are not allowed to interact with other inmates and are only released from their cages three times per week to use the exercise area. This is one of the most strict and highly guarded prisons in America, which is mostly being used for death row inmates who are awaiting federal execution. This is not a place you want to be. Guantanamo Bay, Cuba This prison is owned by the United States and is located on the eastern tip of Cuba. Following the September 11th attacks that took place in the U.S., the government felt that it needed a safe place to imprison the members of the violent group that caused these disastrous attacks. Guantanamo Bay was first opened in 2002. The general public had mixed opinions of the prison, with President Obama promising to close the prison when he was elected into the presidential office. Regardless of his promises, the prison remains open to this day. It currently houses about 150 inmates in two camps, Camp Delta and Camp Iguana though there was another camp that was only open for a short time, known as Camp X-Ray. In this camp, prisoners would be subjected to various forms of enhanced interrogation techniques, which is an interesting way of saying torture. Inmates would be waterboarded or forced into sensory deprivation chambers for extended periods. If you've never heard of a sensory deprivation chamber, it is a room that is designed to shut down all of your senses. It is completely dark, soundproof and offers no airflow or anything other than darkness and silence. The idea behind these rooms is to cause prisoners to lose their sanity and cave under pressure. This is a terrible way of treating humans, though the government insists that it was done for the greater good of keeping American citizens safe. That notion is highly debated. La Sabaneta Prison, Venezuela This prison can be found in Venezuela and has been criticized by people around the world for decades. The prison was only built to house about 700 inmates. However, mass incarceration in Venezuela has led the prison to contain at least 3,700 prisoners at a time. Because of this, there are not enough living areas for the inmates. This has caused cells to be overfilled with many inmates having to sleep in hammocks in the hallways of the building. The prison is also incredibly unfair to the inmates typically giving preferential treatment to inmates who have money or high political status outside the prison. These inmates are allowed to sleep in private cells, while many others are forced to eat, sleep, and live within inches of other prisoners at all hours of the day. There is also no daily routine, meaning that the prisoners have nothing to look forward to and nothing to look back on. They simply exist, day after day, crushing their spirits and raising their aggression toward others. There have been hundreds of stories of super violent crimes that have taken place within the walls of this facility, with most people complaining that the living conditions are inhumane. Mendoza Prison, Argentina This is yet another prison that you would never want to be sentenced to. Located in Argentina, Mendoza Prison is easily one of the most awful prisons in the world. It has been reported that as many as five inmates can be forced into a cell that is only 12 feet by 12 feet, the size of an average child's bedroom in America. How they manage to fit five full-grown men into these cells is beyond me, but that's not the worst part. When you aren't sleeping face-to-face -face with your cellmates, you're forced to use the restroom in a plastic bag. The building has no access to a proper sewage system, so inmates have to use bags when they use the restroom and there is often no private location to do so. Worse yet, inmates are not allowed to see a doctor under any circumstance. It doesn't matter if you're sneezing, coughing, or vomiting. You will not be visited by a doctor. So feel free to share your illness with all your closest inmates because it won't make a difference. The only time you'll be taken to a doctor is when you pass away, as a doctor needs to identify the cause of death. Rikers Island Prison, USA this prison is recognized worldwide as being one of the most awful places you could ever be. The prison is made up of 10 different areas that can contain men, women, and children. The prison is well known for its high rates of violence that are often provoked by guards. The facility has been investigated many times for the mistreatment of inmates, specifically inmates who struggle with mental illness. The prison doesn't seem to have any form of mental rehabilitation program and simply bundles the mentally impaired individuals with the rest of the prisoners. In 2008, an 18-year-old lost his life after being attacked by other inmates. 
An investigation found that the inmates responsible for the attack were a part of a group known as The Program. This program is run by a secret society of prison guards that work to increase the violence in the prison for their own entertainment. This is also done as a way to establish order in the prison, giving rewards and better treatment to prisoners who prove their worth through violence and bullying. What makes this prison even worse is that it has the highest rate of solitary confinement in the United States. Prisoners are sentenced to solitary confinement for countless reasons, and many of the mentally ill are sent there as well, making their mental status significantly worse. The solitary area has been so overpopulated that the prison recently requested an additional 1,000 units be built. This is a seriously scary prison. Kamiti Maximum Security Prison, Kenya Kenya is a country with a long history of political and social unrest, and its prisons have long been notorious for their inhumane conditions. Among these is Kamiti Maximum Security Prison, located in Roy Sambu constituency, stands out as one of the worst. Built in 1954 by the British colonial authorities, Kamiti was designed to hold political prisoners during a state of emergency declared in October 1952. Today, the prison remains overcrowded, unsanitary, and rife with disease. Kamiti was modeled after an old-style colonial system that relied on brutal punishments, including executions by hanging to maintain order. The prison still has its original gallows, although the last execution there was 1987. Over the years, Kamiti has gained a reputation as a place where political dissidents, activists, and other perceived enemies of the state are routinely detained and mistreated. Many of these prisoners have been subject to torture, beatings, and other forms of abuse. Today, Kamiti is seriously overcrowded, with reports suggesting that there are between 1,800 and 2,500 inmates crammed into a space designed for 1,200. The conditions inside the prison are appalling, with serious health conditions such as HIV AIDS, gonorrhea, syphilis, tuberculosis, and dysentery rampant. Prisoners are forced to sleep on the floor, with many sharing small cells designed for a single occupant. Medical care is virtually non-existent, and food and water are often contaminated. In 2008, Kamiti made international headlines when a riot sparked by a contraband search was captured on cell phone video and broadcast on television. The footage showed prisoners setting fire to buildings and attacking guards and highlighted the extreme levels of tension and violence inside the prison. In 2021, the prison was again in the news when three convicted terror suspects escaped. Seven wardens were later arrested for aiding their escape, raising questions about the level of corruption and complicity within the prison system. The situation in Kamiti is not unique. Across Africa, prisons are often overcrowded, understaffed, and lacking in basin amenities such as clean water, sanitation, and medical care. Many of these prisons were originally built to hold a small number of political prisoners, but have since been used to hold criminals and other detainees. As a result, the conditions inside these facilities are often extremely harsh, and prisoners are subject to abuse, neglect, and inhumane treatment. Efforts to reform Kenya's prison system have been underway for many years, but progress has been slow. In many years, there have been calls for increased funding for the prison system, as well as reforms to the criminal justice system as a whole. However, these efforts have been hampered by a lack of political will and resources, as well as by entrenched corruption and inefficiency in the prison system itself. Kalmiti Maximum Prison System is a stark example of the inhumane conditions that many prisons in Africa are forced to endure. Despite efforts to reform the system, the situation in Kamiti remains dire, with prisoners living in overcrowded and unsanitary conditions and suffering from a range of serious health problems. If we are to truly address these issues, we need to recognize the scale of the problem and commit the resources and political will needed to bring about real change. Gladani Prison, Georgia The scandal that rocked Gladani Prison in 2012 put the spotlight on Georgia's practice of prisoner torture at the hands of the guards. The revelations, which included instances of rape and assault, 
were captured on video by a former prison guard turned whistleblower. The release of the videos led to widespread protests throughout the country and the need for reforms in the way inmates were being treated. Despite efforts to improve prison conditions in Georgia over the past decade, Gadani Prison has once again become the center of attention due to the imprisonment of former President Mikhail Saakashvili. Protests have erupted at the facility, with groups both in favor and against Saakashvili's release. The situation has brought attention to the reputation for brutality and notoriety. It has been known for its harsh treatment of prisoners and disregard for human rights. The protests have raised questions about the effectiveness of the reforms made following the 2012 scandal. It is clear that the issue of prisoner treatment in Georgia remains a complex and deeply rooted problem. While some progress has been made, there is still a long way to go before the country's prisons are seen as humane and just. The protests at Gladani Prison also raise concerns about the treatment of political prisoners in the country. The imprisonment of Saakashvili, a former president and political opposition figure, highlights the potential for political bias in the criminal justice system. The situation underscores the need for continued vigilance in monitoring and reforming the country's prison system. It is important to ensure that all inmates are treated fairly and humanely, regardless of their political affiliations or other circumstances. The protests at Gladani Prison serve as a reminder that the issue of prisoner treatment in Georgia is ongoing and requires continued attention and action. It is important to address the underlying causes of the problem and to ensure that reforms are effective in improving conditions for all inmates. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and ring the notification bell for more great videos.